me, I could do anything. Instead of bedtime stories about dinosaurs or dragons, he'd share lessons he learned from his career as an industrial designer. He'd tell me all about product design, manufacturing, and how to sell. Yet, somehow, at the end of each of these bedtime stories, it always ends with the same message. Danny, there are two roads in life. You can either help others build their dreams, or you can help, or others can help you build yours. I understood that to mean don't spend so much time chasing other people's dreams that you forget about your own. My dad spent his entire career building someone else's dream. Deep down, he always wanted to build his own business, but the weight and responsibility of life held him back. But when it came to my dreams, he told me anything was possible. So the cute 14-year-old me believed him and decided to become an entrepreneur. And I'm not talking about any lemonade stand. For the next six years, I lived my wildest childhood dreams. I traveled all over the world selling boxing gloves. I got to train alongside my favorite fighters, make equipment for world champion boxers, and best of all, build something that I believed in. And I loved it. Everything changed right after I turned 20. I'm not sure if you've ever received that <coughs> call that call that changes who you are and who you become. It was my dad. He'd been diagnosed with cancer, and he promised me he'd be okay. He wasn't. When I was 20, I lost my dad. When you lose someone, you not only lose that person, you also lose part of you with them. The part of myself that I lost was the dreamer. I replaced it with choosing the safe, the secure, the responsible. Selling boxing gloves, a career I loved, began to feel that it just wasn't enough. While my company was making good money, I started to believe that in order to succeed, I needed to make great money. Society reinforced that message. More money, more success, more happiness. <coughs> You've heard that before, right? Wrong. So I sold my box club company and built a new agency in pursuit of more. From the outside looking in, I had it all. I built the business. I made the money. But to my surprise, I wasn't happy. After years of chasing what society deems success, here's what I learned. Success is so much more than money. Success is personal. It's defined by me, by you. It looks different for each one of us. For me, success is waking up happy and doing the work that fulfills me. Have you ever had that 2 a.m. haunt, where you lie in bed, eyes wide open, tossing and turning, feeling like you're chasing the shadows of who you want to be. My mind will ping pong. I need to leave my business. I can't leave. What am I going to spend the next 40 years of my life doing work that doesn't fulfill me for a paycheck? That is insane. What dreams do you have that are still haunting you? Dreams you may have buried long ago that are sitting there just below the surface. Those dreams, they are not going to disappear. The longer you wait, unfortunately, the worse you will feel. I even remember one day talking to my friend David about it. I said to him, dude, I'm not happy. I want to make a change. David told me I'd be crazy to leave what I had. That I was living the dream. Hmm. I thought maybe he was right. Someday I'd sell my company, and then someday I'd start pursuing the, the work I really want. Someday 
but not today, right? So convinced that someday I'd do it all, I stayed. Then that call came again. This time, my mom. Cancer. Despite the news, something beautiful happened. For the next two months, as my mom was in the hospital, she'd share bits of gold with me. She'd say, life's hard. It's not fair. And life is glorious. So find your glory. She'd say, don't let this moment define you. Let it guide you. And she'd say, you have to decide the life you want to live, no matter what punches life throws your way. At 25, I lost my mom. But after her death, instead of losing a piece of myself, I rediscovered who I was and who I wanted to become. I found the key to life, to be happy, truly happy. You have to stop waiting for someday and start living the life you want today. Best-selling author and palliative care expert, Ronnie Ware, studied the top regrets of the dying. She found the single biggest regret is this. I wish I had the courage to live the life I really want it. So many of us settle for a life of practicality, telling ourselves that someday we'll do all the things we really want, but then someday becomes what if, which turns into I wish I had. Your what if might sound different than mine. Yours might sound like, what if I asked her out? Dude, she's out of your league, ask her out anyway. <laughs> or what if I put my happiness first for a change? Or, what if I chose to pursue the career that's calling my name? But, what if you could live your Sunday life today? Here's the secret. You can. I challenge you to stop waiting and start living. To lean into your what ifs and to courageously live the life you want someday today. My mom was right. Life is full of good and bad things. Life is unfair and life is glorious. And that you have to decide the life you want to live no matter what punches life throws your way. And when life does throw you a punch, silence the dream killers that tell you to play it safe or that you're not good enough or that you don't have what it takes. Because my dad was also right. You, you can do anything. Thank you.